Okay, good morning everyone. Good day. So our next topic for hydraulics that would be hoof tension. So let us start by defining what is hoof tension and what is hoof is all about. Okay. So let us define what is the meaning of a hoof. A hoof daw is a ring or a circle that is used to bind a barrel. Sa ano bang itsura ng barrel? Ito yung magiging itsura ng barrel. So yung mga nakikita ninyong, for example, this one, itong mga itin na nandito sa barrel, this is just a perfect example for your hoof. Okay? It used to bind iba. It used to bind a barrel. So, ano ba ibig sabihin ng hoof sa madaling salita? So, sa madaling salita, ang hoof daw is just like a cinturon na sinisikipan ang isang bagay just to keep it binded. Kung sa atin pa, parang ang hoof daw is yinayakap ngayong isang bagay para uh, mas maging tuck-in sila or mas maging unit sila para mas maging ligon ang isa ka bagay. Like, the perfect example for this is the barrel. Okay, kasi alam naman natin na ang laman ng barrel usually would be a substance. So, just to keep it binded para hindi masira yung barrel, no, ginagamitan natin siya ng hoop or sinisinturon natin siya. Okay, so let us define naman next would be your hoop stress. So, hoop stress daw is a normal stress in the tangential or azimuth direction. So, hoop stress is a stress that uh, measured uh, degrees clockwise from the north direction. So, shear stress, shear stress siya usually. No? So, next is that you have your hoop tension. So, hoop tension is the first exerted circumferentially perpendicular both to the axis and to the radius of the object. So, in both direction and every particle in the cylindrical wall. So, sa madaling salita, ang hoop tension daw is nangyayari when there is shearing. Okay? Saka lang nagkakaroon ng isang hoop tension sa ating circular pipes or sa ating tanks or sa ating barrel when, when the shearing is present. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng shearing? Di ba yan yung pagkapunit, yung pagkatear, yung pagkasplit ng ating material. So once na there is a shearing or there is there is a shear present in your pipes and your tanks. Therefore, doon lang na expose yung hoop tension ninyo at hoop stress ninyo. Okay? So, sa hoop tension natin, pag-uusapan natin ang dalawang stresses. We have two different stresses. So, first is that you have your circumferential stress. So, ito yung magiging figure niya for circumferential stress. Next is you have your longitudinal stress which is in this type of figure. So, let us define what is the difference between the two stresses. So, first, let us start sa inyong circumferential stress or also called as your tangential stress. Okay? So, it is the representation of a formula PD over 2T where your P, that would be your pressure, your D, that would be your inner diameter, and your T, that would be the thickness of your circular pipes or your tanks. So, imagine, no, in here, ito, you have a tank here that is filled with fluid or a gas under a pressure that it is subjected into a tensile force. Kasi alam naman natin, di ba, na kapag na-shear ito, lumalabas yung tensile, nagkakaroon tayo ng shear. Okay? So, take note that kapag ang ating circular pipes or circular tanks is filled with fluid, ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon ng pressure sa loob. Like, for example, na lang sa tubig, no? Ang tubig natin can cause a pressure kasi it is a pressurized. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng force niya or lahat ng pressure natin is napupunta lahat sa wall. Kasi parang sa madaling salita, gusto niyang kumawala, gusto niyang lumabas, pinapressure niya yung, yung ating walls para mag-burst yung can at kumawala sila. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng pressure na binibigay ng tubig is tinutulak niya yung mga side walls ng ating tank or ng ating pipes. Ito, itong araw na nakikita ninyo. Okay, ganyan. Sige. Tapusin natin. So, the more pressure na mangyari, the more pressure na nafe-feel ng tank natin, no, the more nagkakaroon or the more na mas naiigar, natitrigger yung ka natin para magkaroon ng sharing. Okay? So, the more force, the more pressure na nafe-feel ng ka natin or applying by the force, no, kapag nag-split into two, itong dalawang or itong ka nito into two halves, no, ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon tayo ng sharing or nagkakaroon ng shear. 
So once that arcan is being tear up or being split into a longitudinal direction, ibig sabihin na e-expose yung mga tensile force natin. Like for example na lang, ito, ito perfect presentation natin. So we have a can here that, kunyari, can ito ha, can. So meron tayong can dito na puno daw tayo ng tubig. So ibig sabihin yung pressure ng tubig na ito, kapag nilagyan ko ng force, nilagyan ko ng action, wala siyang uh, pagpupuntahan, di ba? Kundi lahat ng pressure niya is ipupush niya against the wall. Okay, the more pressure na ma-feel niya, okay, the more pressure na ma-feel niya, the more action na na-feel niya, if hinati natin siya longitudinal, pataas, vertically, pag hinati natin siya longitudinal, meron daw tayong pressure or meron tayong tensile force na lumalabas, which is itong T na nakikita niyo sa second figure natin. So, kapag merong, okay, so, di ba by the definition kanina, sa kala natin nakikita ang ating tensile force o yung mga forces natin once there is a shearing. So, kapag na-expose ang or I mean, kapag nagkaroon ng shear, na-expose ang mga tensile force natin. So, ano bang ibig sabihin ng tensile force? No? So, it is the force acting on your can and it is trying to shear the materials apart. Kung sa atin pa, kung sa atin pa, kung ito yung magiging, ay, sorry. <laughs> kung ito yung magiging can, di ba, bind sila. Ganyan, ito yung magiging, ano ba? Yan yung magiging can natin. So, the more pressure, the more force na ina-apply natin, kung longitudinal ang magiging split niya, di ba magaganyan siya? Bubuka siya, bubuka siya. Kung ito yung can natin na, bubuka siya. So, ang tensile force natin is nangyayari when there is shearing or when there is shearing happens. So, once na nag, there is a shear or there is a split na nangyari, di ba nagkakaroon, naghihiwala yung dalawang material. Naghihiwala yung isang material at nagiging dalawa sila. So, ibig sabihin, combined ito, na nag-intertwine ko yung kamay ko. So, kung ito ko yung nag-intertwine yung kamay ko, when there is shearing, di ba naghihiwalay sila? So, ibig sabihin, itong, maragiri, itong nakikita niya ito, ito, this could be the perfect example of our tensile force. Kasi na e ex pag ganito, nakaklose ang, nakaklose ang kamay ko. Example, this is a can. Kapag nakaklose ang kan natin, there is no tensile stress. Okay? But when you apply a force, when you apply a pressure, when you apply an action sa inyong cylindrical pipes or sa inyong tanks, nagkakaroon ng shearing at doon mismo na expose doon mismo na expose ang ating tensile forces. Okay? In this case, sa ating tangential stress, lumalabas ang tensile force ninyo kapag ang split or ang kapag ang shear sa inyong can is in longitudinal motion. Okay? That is why you have your T here on the upper side and you have T here on the lower side. Kasi dalawang tension may yung manakikita. This side and this side. Okay? You have your L here as the length of your cylindrical pipe, your D again, that would be your inner diameter and T, that would be the thickness of your pipe. So let us try to derive your formula kung saan siya nanggaling. The same sa kanina sa sinabi ko, that would be your force. Ito yung mga pressure ng substance na tinutulak mismo yung walls natin. No? Kasi nga, pressurize yung magiging substance natin when it comes sa loob ng ating circular pipes or ng ating tanks. And you have your L here as the height or the length of your uh, tank. And you have your D here as your inner diameter. So take note kapag circumferential tangential stress na pinag-uusapan natin. Your area, no, that would be a projected area which is a rectangular area area. Ito lang. Kasi yung kukunin natin na area is not for the cylindrical tank but for the area of your subjected substance inside the tank. Okay? So you have your tensile force on the other side and another tensile force on the other side. And you will be having a thickness for your pipe. Yan na lang. Nerotate lang natin yung figure natin. So we all know that your pressure is equals to gamma H kasi alam natin that ang pressure natin is nakadepende kung ano yung magiging height ng pagkukunan natin. Di ba yun yung explain natin last time? So mas lumalalim ng mas lumalalim yung height natin, mas lumalaki ng mas lumalaki yung magiging pressure natin. Okay? So height 1 is different from height 2. Pag pressure 2 ay pag pressure ang pinag-uusapan. And you have your formula again for your pressure that will be force over area. Okay, in terms of force, your area, I mean, your formula would be P times A. So, since sabi ko kanina, ang area na pag-uusapan natin sa ating circular pipes or sa hoop tension would be the subjected area of your substance, which is ito, in terms of rectangular. Therefore, your area for your force, that would be D times L. No? The inner diameter times the length of your uh, tank. Okay? 
So, let us try to solve for your summation forces of horizontal, no? That would be equal to zero. Taking to the right would be positive. So, you have 2t is equals to f. So, ano ba yung magiging value ng f natin? That is in terms of p times dl. So, you will be having 2t is equals to p dl. So, if in terms of tensile force ang hahanapin natin, in terms of t, your tensile force, so... Or your, oh yeah, your tensile force. So let us divide both sides by 2. So you will be having a formula of PDL over 2. Take note, force pa lang ito. Okay? So how about itong PD over 2T? Paano kaya natin ito nakuha? Paano ito nakuha? Paano ito na-derive? So you will be having your stress or your, or your stress that will be equal to tensile force over your area or your total area. Or it is the area of your tongue or your side tongue. So, erase natin to. So, you will be having T times L. So, saan nang garing ni Arina T times L? That is your thickness ito. Thickness times the length of your uh, circular piles or your tongue. Okay? That would be thickness times the length. So, saan ba manggagaling yung 2? Yung 2 is nagagaling since dalawang sides yung pagkukuna natin ng area. So, this one and this one. Therefore, you have 2 L. You have your two areas. Okay? So, simplifying, we can conclude that the formula for your circumferential or tangential stress, that would be PD over 2T. Where your P, that would be the internal pressure caused by the fluid. Yan yung sinabi ko, internal pressure. Yung nagpa-pressurize mismo sa kan natin. So, for D, that would be the outside diameter of the tank or, or the container. And letter T, that would be the thickness of the tank or the container. So, move on. So, you have here your longitudinal stress that is in the formula of PD over 2T. So, ang ating longitudinal stress is the same lang ang kanyang explanation sa inyong circumferential stress when your stress happens when there is shearing. Okay? The only difference between the two is that kung ang circumferential stress or your tangential stress is nangyayari kapag ang tearing apart or ang shear niya is acting longitudinal. Okay? Or, or nakatcha vertically. Okay? Pag sinabi naman natin longitudinal stress, ang kanyang pag-shear or ang pag-split niya would be into a horizontal motion. ba? Vertical, horizontal. So kung longitudinal stress ang pag-uusapan natin, ang hati niya or ang shearing niya would be in this manner. So kung hahatiin mo yan, lahat ng tensile force is lalabas. Like ito ang nakikita ninyo dito. Okay, so you have here, nakikita nyo, you have your F, your force here, which is yung applied natin na force, no? Like kasi, for example, pag binamp mo to ng binamp, pag binamp mo ba ang kan mo, di ba? Ang tubig is hindi rin bababa, pero tataas siya. Naalala nyo ba yung uh, Newton's third law of motion, di ba? Sabi niya, in every action, there is an equal and opposite uh, reaction. Okay? So, for example, binamp mo, binam, nilagyan mo ng force, nilagyan mo ng force dito sa taas, nilagyan mo ng pressure sa taas, di ba ang tubig is hindi bababa? Aakit siya ng aakit. Di ako nakikita nyo, you have your force here and you have your internal pressure here. Kasi yung force natin, kung, kung, di ba kung imagine nyo, pag ipipi ninyo ang kan, uh, in terms of uh, horizontal shear siya, magiging ganun siya, di ba? So, kung binamp mo ng binamp ng binamp yung kan mo, ang ang force mo is bababa, but then again, your pressure or your action inside of the tank or your cylindrical is pataas. Parang nagbabounce back sila. Kaya you have your PT here and you have your force na nakikita sa diagram. So, according to the natin, you have your force is equals to P times the area where your F is equals to PT. F is equals to PT because in every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, your F is equal to your PT, if you summation it, if you summation, pag isip yung summation of forces vertical. Okay? Tama. So, once na, uh, once na nakat natin yung ating magiging cylindrical tank, so let us try to spread it. Spread natin. At di ba hinati natin, is to spread natin to get the circumferential or the area of that manner. So, you have your F here or your T as your thickness of your cylindrical tank. So, the circumferential of your circle, that would be pi D. 
Okay, so maging area niya would be in terms of rectangular na. No, you have your thickness and you have your circumferential as pi b. So given that you have your stress is equals to pt over a, so pt is equals to stress area. Dinerive lang natin. Okay, algebra lang. So pt is equals to stress times the area of your cylindrical tank or cylindrical pipes. That would be pi dt in terms of circumferential. Okay. So, F is equal to internal pressure. So, PA is equal to stress times your area. Longitudinal. So, you will be having P times pi over 4 d squared. That would be the area of your cylindrical tank for your internal pressure. That would be stress times the area of your cylindrical tank using your circumferential. Okay? So, that would... Kasi, kasi di ba yung pressure natin is nangyayari all... Ito. Kaya magkaiba yung area. Itong area na ito na pinag-uusapan natin, that would be the area of your cylindrical tank or cylindrical pipe. Itong area lang ito din na pinag-uusapan natin, ito yung mga nag-aak na pressure dito kapag nagkaroon na ng shearing. Ito, yan yung nakita nyo or ito. Wait, wait, erase natin. So ito, itong area na ito. Okay? Yung area na ito, nirepresent natin as this one. No? Para makuha natin yung maging area niya using your circumferential and thickness of your can. Okay? Pag sinispread mo yan, pag kinat mo yan, sinispread mo yan, magiging ganito ang ating orientation. Ha? So, F is equals to PA, ang area natin dito, that would be the area of your of your cylindrical tank. Your area longitudinal, ito yung mga area na nakikita natin into our internal pressure. Okay? Pi will be cancelled. Your D is cancelled also. That is why, deriving the formula, no, you will be having stress or your circumferential stress, or I mean your longitudinal stress is equals to PD over 40. Okay? Uh, I just showed you how to derive the formula or saan ba nanggagaling yung formula na gagamitin natin sa problem. Okay? So let us try to solve an example para mas intindihan natin kung ano yung pinag-uusapan natin. So for our first example, you have here a steel pipe having a diameter of 36 inch carries water under the head of 750 feet of water. Compute the internal pressure of the pipe. Compute the wall thickness of the pipe needed to resist the static pressure if the allowable stress for steel is 6,000 PSI. That would be pounds per inch squared. Okay, so let us try to have the figure. Ah, meron pa pala C. So C would be compute the tangential force on the steel pipe per inch length. So this would be your figure for that one. You have your force, your uh, opposite reaction. You have your tension here. You have your 36 inches and you have your 750 feet uh, height of Okay, so let us compute the internal pressure of the pipe. So, sa pressure natin, you have your P is equals to gamma times H. Okay, since naka-English unit tayo, ibig sabihin, yung gagamitin natin na unit weight of water would be in English also. That would be 62.4 pound per cubic foot. Can you take note of this? This is the English uh, uh, for our unit weight density if the unit would be in terms of English. Hindi tayo naka-SI. Diba pag SI, that would be 9.81 kN per cubic meter. So pag English, meron tayong 62.4 pound per cubic foot. Therefore, we can conclude that the value of your pressure, that would be 46,800 pound per feet squared. But then again, take note for letter B. No, ang letter B na binigyan niya na stress, that would be in terms of PSI. So let us try to derive or to convert the PSF into PSI. Okay? Having that said, you will be having a value of 325 pounds per inch squared. Ito na rin gagamitin natin since ang sunod natin na question would be in terms of PSI. So, for letter B, compute the total thickness of a steel pipe needed to resist the static pressure if the allowable stress for steel pipe is 16,000 PSI. So, aalamin daw natin gaano kakapal yung kinakailangan natin sa tank para hindi siya magkaroon ng shearing or ng shear stress natin just to hold on a stress of 16 PSI. 
So, since nakikita natin that the force is in terms of horizontal, therefore, we can conclude that it is a perfect example of your tangential stress. So, you have your stress is equal to PD over 2T. So, you have 6,000 PSI is equal to 325 PSI, 36 inches divided by 2. PSI will be cancelled. Therefore, your thickness, your needed thickness for this problem or for your steel type, that would be 0.366 inches. Okay, for letter C, so compute the tangential force of the steel pipe per inch length. So as we derived the formula kanina, we all know that the formula for your tensile or tangential force, that would be PDL over 2. Okay, so you have 325 PSI uh, times 36 inch times 1 inch. Your 1 inch here would be a representation for your 1 meter. I mean, 1 strip galing sa ating uh, mo to? steel pipe. No? Matik yan. No? 1 meter strip or 1 inch strip or depende sa unit natin. Masa 1 strip ang ating consider lagi. Okay, cancel yung inch natin. Cancel yung inch leaving us a pound unit only. Therefore, the value for your tangential force, that would be 5,850 pounds. Okay? So, if you have any concern about this uh, example, you may comment no, dito sa ating video or you may uh, chat mismo sa ating group chat. Okay? So, the next example for your hoop tension is this one. So, I showed you na kanina na wala tayong hoop stress or hoops. So, what if ang barrel natin or ang cylindrical tank natin is lalagyan na natin ng sinturon? Ano ba yung mangyayari sa tank natin? Okay? So, you have here a problem. A vertical cylindrical tank is 6 feet in diameter and 10 feet high. Its sides are held in position by means of two hoops, one at the top and one at the bottom. The tank is filled with water up to 9 feet. So, ibig sabihin, meron doon tayong sinturon, no? isa sa taas at isa sa baba. So, let us try to figure it out. So, ano ba yung magiging tanong? First is that compute the hydrostatic force of the tank of the side of the tank. Letter B, determine the tensile stress at the top and the bottom. At the top and the bottom. So let us try to figure it out. Ano yung magiging itsura ng ating tank? Eh? So sabi niya, you have a cylindrical tank that is 10 feet high. Tapos meron na siyang laman ng tubig that is 9 feet high. And then meron tayong diameter which is 6 feet. Okay? So first, let us try to solve your hydrostatic force. Ano ba yung formula ng hydrostatic force natin? That would be your gamma H prime or H bar times A. Sige nga, I'll give you two minutes bago ko i-reveal ang answer. Okay. So, since we have English unit here, yun rin, same lang. Magiging English unit rin yung magiging weight density natin. Ang problema ko dito, ano yung gagamitin yun na H bar? Okay? So, since sa explanation ko kanina, gagamitin lang natin would be the subjected area of your substance, di ba? Subjected area of your substance, which is in rectangular motion. Subjected area only of your substance inside your tank. Okay, so you will be having a 62.4 unit weight density. You have your height as 9 divided by 2. Take note that your H prime or your H bar, ang orientation niya lang would be the height of your water. Hindi height ng tank mismo natin. So yung H prime niyo is babasihan niyo kung ano yung magiging height ng tubig niyo inside of your cylindrical tank. So in this case, you have a 9 feet high and an a projected area natin for the substance would be in rectangular that is why 9 divided by 2 okay hanggang liquid surface tayo 9 divided by 2 so that will give us a 4.5 feet okay so for your area that would be 9 times 6 that would be the area projected of your substance that will give you 54 feet squared so, let us try to solve for your hydrostatic force. So, you will be having 62.4 times 4.5 times 54. You will be having 
I mean, 15,163.2 pounds. Agree? Okay. So for letter B, let us determine the tensile stress at the top and bottom. So according sa problem natin, sabi niya dito is that meron kayong dalawang hopes sa taas at sa baba. Pero sabi niya, oh, sa taas, isa sa taas at isa sa baba. So ibig sabihin, meron tayong sinturon dito mismo sa taas ng ating tank at dito mismo sa taas, ay sa taas, sa baba ng ating tank. So hahanapin daw natin yung tensile stresses of this. Okay? So let us try to solve for that one. Ay, ulit natin drawing. Wala pala siya na drawing dito sa side. Draw natin. So, isa sa taas, bear with it na lang. <laughs> isa sa taas, tapos isa sa baba. That would be your hoop tension. That would be your hoop or that would be the cinturon of your cylindrical tank. No? Okay. So, pag hinati natin into longitudinal motion ng ating magiging uh, cylindrical tank, sana yun? Pag hinati natin yan, ma-expose ang ating tensions. Okay, for this one. Tension sa taas, that would be tension sa taas at tension sa baba. Okay? That would be the top view of our tank. Top view of our tank. So, isa sa taas that caused by your hoops or yung belt ninyo, isa dito, isa dito. That, therefore, we can consider that you have your two T1. Okay? Itong presentation na ito. This one. At isa rin sa baba, no? Which is you have your two T2 on the first side and you have your one T2 on the other side, considering that you have your two T2. Okay, that would be your hoops or your steel hoops. So, ito yung mga stresses or tensile force na hahanapin natin. So, para mas maintindihan natin, let us try to draw your cylindrical tank into in an FBD or into a TD, 2D motion. So, you have here a representation of your cylindrical tank. So, meron tayong 2T1, no? yung kapag nahati na, na-expose yung dalawang tensile force natin by, given by your hoops. And next is you have your 2T2, another tensile force given by your steel hoops sa baba. So, the graphical representation for your water where your force is acting, that would be a varying, parang siyang varying load or in terms of triangular motion. Bakit ba nagiging triangle itong tubig na ito? Di ba sabi natin kanina, sabi natin kanina, kapag mas lumalim, lumalalim ng lumalalim ang tubig natin, mas nagiging pressurized siya. So, ibig sabihin, in this height, ito lang yung mga yung value ng pressure niya. Dito na height nito, naging tumataas ang pressure niya. Mas lalo na dito sa dulo. Dumadami ng dumadami, or I mean, lumalaki ng lumalaki, yung magiging value or magiging uh, pressure natin. Kaya nagiging varying loads tayo. Tama? Erase natin. That, okay? So, yung force na yun, lahat ng pressure na yun is represented by your hydrostatic force or your resultant force. Okay? Naintindihan bakit ba triangular yung magiging forces natin kapag in FBD? Kasi, again, that is your pressure. Ano yun? Pressure is equals to or your pressure force or your pressure that weight equals to unit weight times the height. So, habang tumataas, habang lumalayo ng lumalayo yung height natin, lumalaki ng lumalaki ang value ng pressure ninyo. Okay? So, let us try to solve for the value of your T1 and T2. So, for T1, you can have summation of moment to T2. So, clockwise. Pwede tayo mag-moment sa T2. Tama? Dito, pwede tayo mag-moment sa point A since meron na tayong value ng inyong force. Okay? You have the value of your force or your resultant force na kinuha natin kanina. So, taking clockwise of positive, you have negative 2T1 times 10. Your 10 would be your moment arm galing sa inyong T1 papunta sa point 2. So, plus... F times one-thirds of nine. Bakit one-thirds of nine? That would be the centroid and the moment arm of your triangle. Tama? So, this one would be one-thirds of height and this one will be two-thirds of your height. So, since ang height natin or since ang direction natin is papunta sa T2, that would be one-thirds of nine. That would be equal to zero. So, simplifying, you will have your T1 as 2,274 point 48 pounds 
Nagsa statics lang tayo dito, no? Nagmoment lang tayo. So, ano bang mas madali para makuha natin ang value ng T2 ninyo? That would be? I think na sasabi nyo kung anong gusto kong malaman. So, that would be a summation of forces is equals to zero going right as positive. Okay? So, you have negative 2T1 minus 2T2 plus your F. So, you have negative 2 times 2,174.48 minus 2T2 plus yung hydrostatic force na nakuha natin kanina which is 15,163.2 equal to 0. So, having that said, can you confirm if ang value niya would be 5,307.12 pounds? Okay. So, yun lang, no? Kapag ang tatandaan lang natin, kapag merong hopes or still hopes ang ating magiging barrel or magiging tank natin, pag hinatin natin siya, always dalawang tensile force ang lalabas. Okay? One on the other side and one on this side. Kaya nagkakaroon kayo ng two tensile force sa iisang hopes lang. Sa iisang hope lang. Okay, proceed. Last example for this topic. So you have a cylindrical tank container 8 meter high and 3 meters in diameter is reinforced with two hoops 1 meter at each end. So compute the hydrostatic pressure and what is the tension hoop at the top and the bottom. So first, let us try to figure it out kung ano yung magiging itsura ng ating cylindrical container. So, sabi niya, you, you have 8 meter high cylindrical container and you have your 3 meter high, ay, 3 meters in diameter. So, since hydrostatic force pa lang pinag-uusap, hydrostatic pressure pinag-uusapan natin, no, that is in terms of unit weight density times H bar or H prime times your A. So, since wala kayo nakikitang height ng tubig natin sa problem, therefore, it is safe to assume that ang tubig natin is, or I mean, ang cylindrical container natin is puno ng tubig. Therefore, we can conclude that the height of your water inside the tank would be 8 meter high also. So, you have your unit weight density as 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter your height or your H prime, that would be 8 over 2. That will give us 4 meters. The area or your projected area for your cylindrical container, that would be 8 times 3, given us 24. Okay? So, your therefore, your hydrostatic pressure or your hydrostatic force, that would be 9.81 times 4 times 24. So, it will give you a value of 941.76 kilo newton. Okay, confirm. Sige nga. Okay. Sige. So, for letter B, sabi niya, what is the tension hoop at the top and the bottom? So, according sa problem natin, ang tension hoops, I mean, your two hoops daw are located one meter at each end. So, ibig sabihin, 1 meter, galing sa taas, baba tayo ng 1 meter, doon nangyayari or doon nakalagay ang hoop ninyo or your steel hoop. Pag galing naman sa baba, akit tayo ng 1 meter, therefore dito nangyayari or dito uh, nalagay yung inyong steel hoop. So, hindi parehas sa first problem that your steel hoop is located mismo sa baba and located mismo sa taas. So, ibig sabihin, baba tayo ng 1 meter, akit tayo ng 1 meter para makuha natin yung magiging value ng inyong uh, tension hopes. Okay? So, let us try to draw it again. No? Draw natin ulit. Bear with it lang, no? Kasi hindi ako marunong maglagay ng steel hopes ng drawing na merong ganito. Yung i-figure talaga. So, i-draw na lang natin. Bala na tikwi-tikwi. <laughs> tikwi-tikwi siya. Okay? So, 1 meter uh, 1 meter at each end. So, 1 meter galing sa taas and then 1 meter galing sa baba. So, therefore, you will have a 6 meter high in between of two hoops. So, the distance between the two hoops would be 6 meter. Okay? 6 meters. Okay? So, having the representation due to I by your 2D or your FBD. So, you have here a straight line or a vertical line representing your hydrostatic, 
I mean your cylindrical container. So your pressure or your hydrostatic force which is parang uh, varying loads kasi yun nga again and again ang ating pressure is nag increase when our height increases also. So you have your 2T1 as your pressure or your tensile force for the first steel hoop and you have your 2T2 as your second steel hoop tensile force. And siguro somewhere out here, the, your resultant force is acting in this manner, which is your point A. Okay? So, centroid of your triangle, that would be H over 3. And kung galing ka sa taas, that would be 2 thirds of 3. So, let us try to solve for your T1. Ano bang mas madali para mas solve natin ang T1? Saan kaya natin? Mag-moment tayo ulit sa T2? Pwede ba? Mag-moment tayo ulit sa T2 para makuha natin ang T1. Since you have a value, you have a value of your force. Pwede. Mama. Pwede, pwede din mag-summation of forces tayo. Two equations tayo and two unknowns para hitting one bird, two birds with one stone. Yun ba yan? <laughs> tama ba? Hitting two birds with one stone. Maragay nga na siya. Ang bot, kung tama to siya. Basta maragang ganun. Pwede siguro no, no? mag-two equation, two unknowns tayo. Para mas madali natin siyang masob. Since kanina, on the second example natin, sino ko na sa inyo na pwede natin siyang isa-isahin pag-solve. Okay, pwede yung T1 muna, pwede din T2. Pagkatapos. But what if pwede natin isabay two equation, two unknowns? Pwede rin naman, di ba? No? So let us try to solve for your T1 using your summation of forces uh, horizontal equal to zero going right as positive. So you have negative 2T1 minus 2T2. This should be 2T2, yung isa. 2T2 plus F is equal to zero. So that would be your equation number one. So, what more for your, what more? So, other equation for your T1 and T2, no? Para makuha natin ang values na yan is that we need a weekend summation of moment at point A equals to zero taking clockwise as positive para yung T1 at T2 la yung ma-expose natin. So, ang problema natin ngayon would be the moment arm. So, you have here your negative T1 times 4.333. Yan yung magiging moment arm ng T1 ninyo papunta sa point A. For your point 2 or your T2, you have negative 2T2. I mean, that would be positive. Uh, that would be positive. That would be positive 2T2 times 1.667. Okay. So, saan ba nagagaling itong mga moment arm natin na ito? So, let us try to look at the figure. Ano ba yung 2? Di ba sabi natin, 1 meter from the top, doon na kalagay ang ating first steel hoops. So, 4.333. Saan ba nang galing yung 4.333? So, ano ba yung 2 thirds of H? Ano ba yung 2 thirds of 2 times 8 divided by 3? I think that would be 5.333. Tama? So, minus 1. Para sa location ng ating first steel hoop, that would be 4.333. Okay, how about dito tayo? Diba? Ang, uh, ito, wala pa. So for this one, you have your H over 3. So ano ba yung H over 3 or 8 over 3? That will give you 2.667. So sabi natin, 1 meter galing sa baba. Pab galing sa baba, aakyat tayo ng 1 meter para malocate natin ang tension hook 2 natin. So, that would be minus 1 kaya binigyan kayo ng 1.667. So, since we equate the two equations, no, you have your equation 1 and equation 2, therefore, we are able to get the value of your T1 and T2. So, equate 2, no? equate 2, mode 5. Ano yun sa calculator nyo? Yung nga, 2 equation, 2 announce. Try to solve for your T1 and T2. Okay, can we confirm if the values are 294.432 and 765.312? Okay, I guess the first answer is incorrect. So, since ang T2 natin, that should be positive. Kasi nga, clockwise 
positive tayo. So, this one should be a positive value. So, can we check if ang value ng T1 and T2 natin would be 130.826 and 340.054. So that's it. End of our discussion for this day for all about hope tension. So if you have any concern, clarification for our topic for today, uh, kindly uh, comment here sa ating chat box sa ating video or di kaya uh, chat it through Facebook. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your understanding. God bless. Okay. I hope you learned something. Take care and... Uh, God bless always. Bye-bye.